and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Clowns in Cyberspace. In this video, I will be showing you the process of making my clown character named Fragola. Uh, this video has some truly epic highs and lows for me, so why don't we begin? When I've approached costume making recently, I've tried to um, pull from fabric that I already own instead of going out and buying new fabric. Um, and that was my initial intention for this costume. I had uh, a piece of fabric picked out that I wanted to use for sure, but I ended up needing a lot of just plain white cotton to execute what I had in mind. So I did end up going out and buying a lot of white cotton fabric. So that is the first epic low of this costume making video. Um, but here is the concept sketch I had in mind. So, for this clown, I wanted it to be themed after cake or confectionery of some sort. Uh, this was because the fabric that I chose for the bodice, it looked like it had strawberries on it at first, but after looking at it again, I think it might be pine cones. So here's the concept sketch I have for this character. Um, I wanted it to have a lot of ruffles, a lot of bows, and a large poofy skirt. Um, a scalloped hemmed skirt at that uh, and yeah the main colors are going to be white and red and I also wanted to give this character um, long hair. I haven't given a clown long hair in a while. I only have two clown characters that have hair at all so I think that we are due for another one um, but yeah I am very excited about this character um, so let's get into making it. Now, I admittedly don't have a lot of footage of me making the actual bulk of the costume um, and showing off the patterns that I drafted to use, but a lot of them um, at their base are very simple, uh, specifically the bodice piece and the, the sleeve, um, and the headpiece is the same pattern I always use, just with certain embellishments added to it. And then the skirt and all of the ruffles along the collar and the arms are just a long, long, long piece of white cotton that I've uh, scalloped the hem of and gathered up. I'd say the bodice and the sleeves are quite form-fitting this time around, and that was my main experiment with this costume and the patterns I wanted to draft for it. Um, and the rest of it, like the skirt and the headpiece, are, are pretty much very straightforward. So the bodice of the costume actually came together really nicely. It was the giant poofy skirt that ended up being a huge nightmare for me. First of all, I spent probably like four days straight uh, adding the scalloped hem to all of the fabric. Uh, it was really time consuming and the thread I was using kept snagging and breaking, which was very, very soul crushing. And also, um, I decided to cut corners, unfortunately, and instead of making a proper petticoat for this dress, I kind of just gathered all of the fabric together in a combination of box pleats and also gathering it with a thread, and it ended up making the waistband part really chunky and really bulky and uncomfortable to wear, unfortunately. Um, so it didn't turn out um, to be my favorite part of the costume. It is wearable, but it's definitely uncomfortable. And if I were to make it again, I would definitely put in the extra work to do it properly. Cutting corners is never gonna get you far. Now that that heartbreak is over, we can move on to better and brighter things like sewing the ruffles onto the sleeves and also the neckline. Um, I really wanted the sleeves and neckline to match the hem of the um, skirt, so I uh, also did a bunch of the scalloped hemming along there and I sewed it on by hand um, and I finished off the neckline with a bit of um, trim and also a nice big red bow. And the bow is sewn down on one side of the zipper on the front closure and then attaches to the other side with a snap that I added. So 
So for making the mask for the costume, these are all of the materials I use. And then another helpful uh, tool is my plaster replica of my own head. And basically I put a sheet of saran wrap over the plaster mold and then I add plaster strips over that um, to create a strong base. In the past I have gone quite lightly with the plaster strips to make it more lightweight the mask but I've noticed that that kind of results in a um, final product that isn't as durable. So this time I put a, a lot of layers of plastic strips on and that was a good idea because while I was filming the ending segments for this video I actually dropped the mask on the floor and it did not break at all which was uh, much to my surprise. Anyway here's what the mask looks like when it's all dried. I usually go around the edges of the mask with additional plaster strips to strengthen them and once that's done we are ready to begin sculpting. The sculpting process is where having the plaster replica of your own head becomes really handy because um, you really want to be able to work the clay into the plaster and press down quite hard and without that uh, head there underneath um, you risk the mask caving in on itself which is not good. I usually start with the nose and the eyelids for the face just because I feel like um, with those two elements done, uh, I get a better sense of how the face in total will look like, and then the eyelids usually come last. The sculpting part, um, you really have to trust the process because throughout a lot of it, it will look really lumpy, wonky, and lopsided, but the more you work at it, the more it will turn into the beautiful face you want it to look like. And once all the sculpting is done and dusted, I pop it into the oven for a little over an hour so that it can cook all the way through. And 
once it is done in the oven, I begin the sanding process. I like to take the mask outside while I sand it so I don't get dust in my lungs when I'm doing that. Um, here's what it looks like all cooked and yeah I just sand away and again these clips are not sped up I'm just really that fast. And once I am done sanding the mask, it is time to paint it, which is my favorite part. I begin with painting the mask with a layer of gesso first. Uh, I noticed that the white polymer clay I use isn't perfectly porcelain white, so that's why I use the gesso and also to give it a good surface to add pastels and paint onto. And after I've finished um, layering on many layers of gesso, I quickly give that a sand with a finer grit sandpaper before adding the eyelashes. And for the eyelashes, I love to make them out of um, epoxy sculpt. Um, I've made them out of polymer clay before, but they always end up snapping off. The epoxy sculpt is way more durable and it dries way stronger. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a must. I love to do that. I'd also noticed that with other masks I had been making, um, I kind of got a little bit crazy with the length of the eyelashes. So this time I tried to make them a little bit smaller and a little bit neater so they don't look as crazy as they have in the past. And also I wanted to give this clown eyebrows, but since the hair was going to be white and there was going to be bangs covering a little bit of the face, I didn't want to have uh, strong black eyebrows. So I wanted them to be, to look like the same hair that's growing out of the clown's head. So I decided to sculpt them on with um, the leftover epoxy sculpt I had and then paint them white. So that way that they're differentiated through being an elevated element on the face rather than just painted on. It was my first time doing this type of thing and I really loved it, so I might do it again. And since this clown is inspired by strawberries, I wanted to give uh, the mask some white freckles. So I just dabbed on some masking fluid that I usually use for watercolors onto the face before I began um, painting it or using any pastels to keep those areas white. And here I am beginning uh, painting the mask. Really most of it is just pastels. I build up the pigment in the, the blushing of the cheeks, the lips, the eyeshadow, all with layering pastels with sealant and pastels with sealant to build up a richer color. And once I am pleased with the way the makeup looks, I'll then go ahead and paint the eyelashes black. 
And I think that that's what really ties the whole look together for me and what makes me realize that I actually don't hate the mask I've made is once I painted the eyelashes black, I'm like, oh yeah, this is pretty good, yay. But before then, I'm always on the edge. And then finally, I am picking off all the little dried rubber bits to reveal the white freckles. And this made me feel like I was giving the mask a facial and I was doing little extractions of blackheads. Adding the hair to the headpiece was sort of just like making a wig. Um, I laid down tracks of um, fringe onto the headpiece and sewed them down in layers until I built up enough to look like a head of hair. Um, and then I gave the bangs a chop, which I didn't film because it was really difficult. Um, but once that was done, I added uh, some earmuffs lined with some uh, nice pearl beads and the headpiece was done after that. And then the costume was looking a little bit bare when I tried it on, so I also quickly just made a pair of red glove-esque things for my forearms. And lastly, I wanted to make a pair of matching shoes like always, and if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to make um, shoe covers for shoes you already own, I have a tutorial for that on my Patreon account. Here is the costume all finished. Honestly, it was a lot more work than I had initially thought it was going to be, but I am more than happy with the way it turned out. Aside from the blenders with the skirt, you live and you learn. Um, but with that aside, I am very, very pleased to have finished um, Fragola, the strawberry shortcake clown. I hope that you all enjoyed watching, and I also hope you will consider liking the video giving me a comment, subscribing, and if you're up for it, um, supporting me on Patreon. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know what you thought in the comments, and I hope you have a very, very clown-tastic rest of your day. Bye!